we're going to talk about multiple endocrine neoplasia, also abbreviated MEN, which is MEN, and in particular we're going to talk about MEN1. There's uh, three types of MENs. Uh, there's MEN1, there's MEN2, and there's MEN3. Uh, sometimes it's called 2A and 2B, but we're going to concentrate on MEN1. MEN1 is also given a certain uh, name, uh, Wormer, Wormer syndrome. And the way I remembered this was that uh, 1 um, and W, um, the connection there, that the word 1 sounds like it begins with the letter W, even though it doesn't. kind of sounds like it, but that's how I remembered it. What is MEN? Well, basically, it's a, a syndrome that involves tumors of three uh, parts of the body, three organs. And I'll draw a really quick crude diagram to kind of illustrate these, uh, the location of these three. The first um, organ that is involved is located in the brain and that's the pituitary and we'll go into details about what type of tumors and what they do and the second uh, uh, gland is located in the neck and they're really small there's four of them collectively are called parathyroid glands and the final one is a little further down in the abdomen and it's the pancreas and if you notice all three of them begin with the letter P so that kinda helps in memorizing uh, men one so let's talk about each one we'll start with the pituitary what type of tumor what does the tumor secrete and those types of things well the pituitary the most common tumor is a tumor that secretes pro prolactin also known as a prolactinoma and as the name implies this secretes the hormone prolactin in large quantities another type of uh, uh, tumor that can be uh, um, involved in this is a tumor that produces growth hormone and what's important to remember is what is this going to do in the body well, the very first thing that you would get from uh, increased prolactin levels, especially um, in a woman, is galactorrhea. And you can kind of uh, uh, think of this as a symptomatology also. So galactorrhea, and then growth hormone, if you have excess growth hormone, that causes acromegaly. And then another really important thing is because the pituitary is located very close to the optic nerve, these tumors can cause visual disturbance and um, including headache. And that's very, very uh, a common presentation in a clinical vignette where a person presents with headache and it's because of a brain tumor. So that's the first one. That's the first P. Moving on to the second P, the second gland that can have a tumor is the parathyroid gland. And the parathyroid gland by its name secretes parathyroid hormone PTH and um, parathyroid hormone and parathyroid hormone uh, its uh, function in the body is to increase calcium so if you have a tumor of the parathyroid or if you have parathyroid uh, hyperplasia uh, you'll get increased calcium levels and increased calcium levels can lead to nephrolithiasis. Nephrolithiasis, of course, in layman's terms, is kidney stones. And those kidney stones are going to be composed of this excess calcium. So that's the second gland. The third and uh, final part of uh, MEN1, multiple endocrine neoplasia, is tumors of the pancreas. And tumors of the pancreas, there's three types that could happen, so I'll break it up into A, B, and C. The first one is called a gastrinoma. 
And as the name implies, uh, this increases elevated levels of the hormone gastrin. When this happens, uh, they've given a special name to this type of uh, tumor. It's called ZE or uh, Zollinger Ellison syndrome. So what does gastrin do? Why is gastrin important? Gastrin can increase gastric acid production and that can lead to stomach ulcers or peptic ulcers. So that's important. The second um, type of tumor that can happen uh, in the pancreas is called an insulinoma. An insulinoma, as the name implies, is a tumor that increases high levels of insulin. And if you have high levels of insulin in the body, that can drop your blood sugar. So the, the main symptom of that is hypoglycemia. And then finally, the third type of tumor that could happen is something called a VIPoma. So what's VIP? VIP is um, vasoactive intestinal peptide. And when this happens, the key uh, symptoms are severe diarrhea. severe diarrhea and electrolyte abnormalities which are usually what happen with secretary diarrhea because you lose a lot of fluids so that is a rundown of the type of tumors that are involved in MEN1 so when you talk about diagnoses what you really need to do is go through a list of all the tumors and think about what does each tumor secrete and that's what you need to test in the body so if you look at the first one, the first uh, gland, it was the pituitary. And if you remember, um, the pituitary could, in this uh, uh, syndrome, secrete high levels of prolactin and growth hormone. So this is the part of the diagnostic workup, the labs you would order. And so the reason I'm writing it out like this is so that you kind of remember it, understand it rather than memorize the list. Second uh, gland, if you remember, was the parathyroid. And the parathyroid involves elevated calcium uh, levels if there's a tumor. So that's the other lab test you need to order. Also, the hormone itself can also be ordered as a lab test. And then finally, the pancreas most commonly secretes that gastrinoma that we talked about so you can order a gastrin level those are some of the the main diagnostic tests <clears throat> the other part of the diagnosis is of course imaging studies that uh, will localize the tumors so either a CT or an ultrasound to localize um, MRI or CT to localize the the tumors uh, in the various glands and uh, the symptomatology is also very important. Uh, for example, um, if the person has a tumor of the pituitary gland, they can have those visual field de visual field defects. And this is, of course, part of your, you know, history and physical exam. Um, if the person has um, increased prolactin levels, they can present with galactorrhea. Increased growth hormone levels, they can present with acromegaly presentation of acromegaly. Increased calcium levels, they can present with kidney stones. So it's important to, to understand this rather than just memorize it because it would make a lot more sense if you kind of put the pieces together rather than just memorize a big long list. So how do you treat it? Well, the treatment is primarily surgical. Once you localize the tumors, you um, surgically remove them. But there are a couple medications that I'd like to talk about. The first one is um, a medication to treat a prolactinoma. To uh, decrease prolactin levels in the body, you use a dopamine agonist if you're using medications. The reason is because a dopamine agonist, dopamine in particular, that neurotransmitter inhibits prolactin. Um, dopamine puts the brakes on prolactin. This is something that I always used to write and a dopamine agonist like bromocryptine which is very very popular that can be used to inhibit prolactin levels 
Another uh, very important medication is octreotide because octreotide is a is an inhibitory um, medication that inhibits uh, um, the release of many hormones so it can be used in men one uh, for to inhibit various uh, hormones uh, and their uh, release so it inhib inhibits the release of quite a few and I'll list them growth hormone gastrin VIP and also insulin and all of these were uh, involved in some way or another in the tumors that I discussed and now I'll uh, show you a few uh, clinical vignettes a patient comes to medical attention because of a kidney stone during the clinical evaluation the patient reveals that he has had a history of stomach ulcers which are the following diagnoses should the patient consider and the vignette doesn't tell you much but they're obviously trying to come up with some syndrome uh, this one is actually men too and uh, I'll, I'll make another video about men too soon and this one as you know is men one well let's talk about this a kidney stone would happen because of a um, parathyroid tumor so a parathyroid tumor or, or hyperplasia of the parathyroid would increase uh, the levels of parathyroid hormone and that re that results in increased levels of calcium and as we talked about earlier calcium can then go and deposit and cause these kidney stones nephrolithiasis the medical or technical term so that's the the first part the stomach ulcers are or peptic ulcers, whichever way you want to describe it, Ga gastric ulcers also, are because of elevated levels of gastrin, because of that gastrinoma. And if you remember, the gastrinoma is a pancreatic tumor. It can be a part of uh, the enteropancreatic tumors. So you got the pancreas and you've got the parathyroid, and those two P's lead to choice E. I, I do realize that they don't have the third uh, P. Uh, they have parathyroid and they have pancreas. They don't have the the uh, pituitary, but you can have just two of the three uh, and still be um, uh, still have uh, men one. Uh, the next one, a 40-year-old man previously diagnosed with kidney stones complains of gnawing and burning epigastric pain. On questioning, he notes moderate to severe diarrhea. Measurement of the patient's basal gastric acid output reveals that it is markedly elevated. These symptoms are likely the result of which of the following neoplastic syndromes. Well, in this one, they just write them out. Men 3 and men 2B are the same. Uh, they're just different names for the same disorder. Well, the kidney stones really are the exact same thing we talked about in the first one. Uh, the kidney stones are because of the parathyroid tumor releasing a lot of uh, PTH that causes increased calcium and that can go and deposit and cause kidney stones so that's been already been talked about the severe diarrhea however if you remember is because of the VIP vasoactive intestinal peptide and that uh, can cause this watery diarrhea and then this gastric acid uh, increased gastric acid output is because of the increased gastrin level because of those gastrinomas that can occur from the enterohepatic tumors which is something we talked about right here so we've got um, the same pretty much the same situation as the the previous uh, vignette they just added another tumor and that of course is men one and then finally a routine physical exam demonstrates hypocalcium in a 45-year-old man. Circulatory levels of parathyroid hormone are also elevated. Exploratory surgery of the neck reveals diffuse hyperplasia of all four parathyroid glands. Which of the following screening studies would most likely be helpful in confirming the diagnosis of multiple endocrine neoplasia type 1? Okay, you have parathyroid hyperplasia. So they've already uh, and they've also also even told you that's men one so what you have to do is look through these four choices and say which one of these um, 
hormones or neurotransmitters are involved in MEN1? Well, interestingly, um, I, I, although this I didn't mention it in this presentation, um, choice A is involved in MEN2, um, and then so is choice B and D. They're also involved in MEN2. So by default, it leaves choice C. And we talked enough about gastrin that uh, that wouldn't be much of a surprise.